simplify the following. And we have um, a few different types to look at. So simplify first the square root of negative 12 times the square root of 2. And with simplifying square roots, a lot of times there's different ways to start the problem. Um, we could start this problem by multiplying the two square roots together. Or we could simplify the square root of 12 first. Um, what I would think is that maybe if I simplify square root of 12 and then I multiply the square roots together, I'm going to have to simplify again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that multiplication first. Right? If we have two, square, two numbers underneath the square root, we are able to put those numbers together underneath the square root when they're multiplying. And so we'd have the square root of negative 24. Now, you can make a factor tree with this if you want to, um, or you can think of, you know, what are your factors of 24, and, you know, are there any perfect square factors? So when I think of 24, it's 8 and 3, that doesn't work. Uh, 2 and 12, that doesn't work. 4 and 6, well, 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of negative 24 as... I'm going to pull out that negative 1 because that's what's causing this to be an imaginary number, right? Anytime we have a negative under square root. And then times 4 and times 6. So we can write each of those as their own separate square roots, going in the opposite direction of how we began the problem. So we have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And perform each of those square roots, right? The square root of negative 1 is i. Right, that is your imaginary number, because we can't take the square root of a negative. Um, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 6 can't be simplified. Right, 6 is just 2 and 3. So we would rewrite that. Um, we would usually put our i after our coefficient of 2, so 2i square root of 6. And that is our final simplified um, answer. Then if we look at the next problem... 3 square root of negative 24 times 2 square root of negative 18. Again, we could simplify each of those square roots separately, or we could multiply them together um, first, right? And if we do that, I'm going to kind of think, I'm going to show you both ways at least a little bit. Let's go ahead and multiply them together, like I was saying before. Or, well, actually, let's, let's simplify them first. Sorry, <laughs> let's simplify them first. And let's rewrite the square root of negative 24 as we just did it, right? It's negative 1, 4, and 6. We still have the 3 out front, too, times 2, the square root of negative 18. You'd have your negative 1. Um, 18 is 3 and 6, or 2 and 9, and 9 is a perfect square, so we would use 2 and 9. Right? I usually write my perfect square number first. So now we can break each of those up into individual square roots. So square root of negative 1, square root of 4, square root of 6, and square root of negative 1, square root of 9, square root of 2. And so now if we multiply all that stuff together, it's a lot, right? Um, we would have, actually let's do the square roots first. We have 3, this is i, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 6 is still square root of 6. And then times 2, this is i. When you take the square root of negative 1, the square root of 9 is 3, and then we still have the square root of 2. So now that we have simplified each of those, we can multiply everything together. Right? All of your outside numbers can multiply together, so we have a 3 and a 2, a 2 and a 3. I'm going to go ahead and underline all of those so we can see. We're going to multiply 3 times 2 times 2 times 3, and when we do that, we would have 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. So we get 36 when we multiply all of those together. And then I'm going to move on to multiplying my i's together. Right? i times i is just like x times x, right? it would be i squared. And then lastly, let's look at multiplying our square roots together, right? The square root of 6 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 12. So we have 36 i squared square root of 12. But we're not done. We still need to do some simplifying, right? We have i squared. Anytime we have a higher power of i, we can simplify that. Um, and the square root of 12, we can simplify that. So what is i squared? Remember, i squared is like taking the square root of negative 1 and squaring it. So the square and the square root cancel out with each other, and we get negative 1. 
And I squared is probably going to be the most commonly seen higher power of I that you see. So you want to make sure that you'd have that connection, that you remember that I squared is equal to negative 1. And then the square root of 12, um, we can break 12 up into 2 and 6, or 4 and 3. And 4 is a perfect square, so I'm going to use 4 and 3. And I'm going to go ahead and just break up those square roots, do two steps at a time there. Um, so we have 36 times negative 1, or negative 36. The square root of 4 is 2, and then we have still the square root of 3. And we're almost finished, because we are able to take that square root of 4, we can now take 2, its square root and multiply it with negative 36. And we get negative 72 square root of 3. Oh my, lots of simplifying that we did there. All right, simplified square roots three times technically because you simplify the square root of 24, the square root of 18, negative 24, negative 18, um, the square root of 12. We had our i's to take care of. So you might be looking at it like, what's a different way that we could have gone about doing this problem? What would have been maybe a faster way to do that problem? You might be tempted to go ahead and multiply the numbers together, right? 3 times 2 is 6, and then you're like, well, the square root of negative 24 times the square root of negative 18, right? You can multiply numbers underneath the square roots. However, this is where it gets tricky. When we start having imaginary numbers, the properties of square roots don't work exactly the same way because if we were to just multiply um, negative 24 times negative 18 that gives us a positive 432 which completely ignores our i right and when we had i before we had i squared it gave us the negative in front so by multiplying those together again we've lost that entirely so what you'd actually need to do before you multiply negative 24 and negative 18 is you'd have to rewrite them um, as i times the square root of 24 and i times the square root of 18. So then you would multiply your i's together in addition to your 3 times 2. So you could take 3 times 2, and that's 6, i times i, and that's i squared, and then the square root of 24 times the square root of 18 now works to give us the square root of 432. And then you would need to like maybe do a factor tree with the square root of 432. But that's another way that you could go about doing that middle problem. So last one, I know this video is getting a little bit long. Um, we already have our imaginary numbers. Right? We've already basically in a way kind of simplified the square root of a negative and we want to multiply. So negative 3i times negative 7i times 2i. So just like when we're multiplying with variables, you multiply the coefficients, kind of like we did on the previous problem. Um, you take negative 3 times negative 7 times 2, and then you also take i times i times i. So negative 3 times negative 7 is 21. 21 times 2 is 42. I times I times I would be I cubed, right, because there are three I's multiplying with each other. But we have a higher power of I now, which we can simplify. So what we have to remember is, well, what is I cubed? You could go back at your notes and look at it, or we could rewrite it as I times I squared, right, because anytime we have I squared, that's the one that connection that we should automatically, hopefully, remember. I squared is negative 1. So I can replace that i squared from our i cubed, because i cubed is three i's, so you could just put two of the i's together as i squared. You can replace that with negative 1. And so now we have negative 42 i. Or again, if you remembered that i cubed is equal to negative i, you could have substituted that in from the beginning. Um, either way, you would end up with the correct answer of negative 42 i as the product of those three imaginary numbers.